So I guess this is sort of a continuation video where I'm also kind of saying, well, you know, on the other hand, so yes, in my last video, I talked about those who continually and just insistently use the word grooming to describe the public school teaching of sexual orientation and gender theory. Indeed, most of the people who refuse to use the more accurate word, which is most likely in their vocabulary, which is indoctrination, the people who refuse to use that word and prefer to use or insist on using the word grooming are usually coming from a very religious perspective. I mean, there are plenty of people who are just calling it indoctrination, and they're generally not the ones who think that we should be teaching religious values in schools. I don't know, maybe I'm in the wrong here, but I think language is important. You know, maybe I'm just being too semantical about the whole thing. But to me, as I said in the other video, when you say that these teachers are grooming children, you're essentially saying that these teachers are wanting to either sexually exploit these kids, or they want those kids to be easier to sexually exploit by others. You know, it makes the teachers out to be evil predators. And I can't just sit here and listen to people, so many people, say that disparaging of comments about people who, in the, for the most part, are trying to do something positive. I'm not saying the teachers are in the right, but assigning, you know, malice and evilness to them is counterproductive. We owe a lot to teachers. They certainly don't get paid enough, which might contribute to what we're perceiving as uh, teachers not doing as good of a job as they used to, but, I mean, some of that is just, some of that could be nostalgia and such, but, I mean, if we're to be fair, teachers have to put up with a lot more than they did back in the day. I mean, look at how there are some violent kids. I mean, especially, like, you think about high school. Yeah, there there are some violent kids, and teachers have to worry about Kids going off on a dime, on a dime, what's the right phrase for that? Kids going off for almost no reason. You know, hey, can you put down your phone? And then they go nuts or something, you know? I mean, it's just, you know, they, they never know what they're going to deal with. So, you know, it's, it's crazy what teachers have to worry about now. So, again, making them out to be demons or satanic or evil or whatever is not a constructive direction. We have to express why we don't want this stuff being taught. And at the same time, I mean, maybe we can't really give a very good description of why with, without going into a very long explanation, so it's, it's going to be very difficult. I, I think what's more important is to talk about why there is a massively growing negative attitude towards LGBT activism. And that's where we get to the, well, on the other hand, part of this video. It just kind of seems that a whole lot of people don't know what tolerance means anymore. To tolerate means to put up with something, to allow something to exist. Tolerance does not mean celebrating. You can't expect everyone to wear the pride pin or jersey or, or patch or shirt or pride shoelaces or <laughs> change their social media avatar, or to join in celebrating activity and actions that the straight male version of those same actions would be demonized as being patriarchal and misogynistic. No, you, you can't expect that from people. Tolerate? Sure. Fine. Great. But, but celebrate? That's an unreasonable request. If an athlete doesn't want to wear a pride pin or a pride jersey or, or whatever it is, it doesn't automatically mean that they're anti-gay. No, athletes shouldn't be required to participate in political or religious messaging and grandstanding. I mean, with very rare exception, like if politics are literally part of the job, no employer should require that kind of thing. And yes, the pride flag is most certainly a political symbol, a political ideological symbol, uh, and in, in, it, it could even be argued that it's a religious symbol, representing ideological dogma and a strong belief in a number of things without evidence. 
It's a symbol of collectivism as opposed to the U.S. flag, which is a symbol, mostly a symbol for individual rights with a whole bunch of really kind of toxic baggage that has been mostly declawed. And I know some people are going to be immediately on my case. Hey, that's not what the U.S. flag stands for. And they'll say that the U.S. flag currently still stands for colonialism, imperialism, patriarchy, and white supremacy. And it all needs to be dismantled. And you know what? If that's really all the flag stood for, and we hadn't declawed most of those things, and it didn't also stand for individual rights, I'd fully agree with you. But we've declawed most of our bad patterns. I mean, mostly. We're still a warmongering country that exploits a lot of other countries. We do a lot of awful things across the globe. The world fears us. You know, we have our fingers in too many pies. We also don't regulate capitalism like we should. I mean, there are a whole bunch of things that we need to work on, especially things like universal health care. Having said that, we don't need to replace the good things just because there have been bad things. There's no need to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Let's stick with individualism and merit. And we can't go the collectivist route. We can't go the DEI route. We can't hire, fire, give housing to, allow people to, to speak based on uh, sexual orientation, race, or gender. Equality of opportunity is the way. Equity and equality of outcome isn't even possible. Absolutely help people in need in every way we can, have as many, you know, have a whole bunch of safety nets, you know, allow people to, to build themselves a life again. But we can't give up on the concept of merit. If we do, it will leave people, many people, with very little reason to want to excel in anything, as well as it essentially punishes those who are naturally gifted. To me, that's, that's not progress. That's making everyone equally miserable based on the lowest common denominators. But to a lot of people, collectivism, DEI, and authoritarian social pressure to believe certain things is what the progress pride flag stands for currently. Obviously, it can't be on some sort of major historic level like the U.S. flag, since the first version of the pride flag was made in the 1970s. But it really was just about equality and tolerance back then. But, you know, for maybe around the year before uh, they added the black and brown stripes, which uh, they added the black and brown stripes in 2017, and it was just around 2016 when... <sighs> The pride movement went on its quick journey to being what it is today. To many people, the current pride movement goes well beyond just trying to get people to be tolerant of LGBT people as individuals. You know, you're, you're supposed to change your whole belief system around certain areas. And it has gotten so authoritarian, as starting around 2016, that many people have just had enough. You know, it's though uh, we, I say we, uh, I say this as a gay person, you know, it's as if we're telling people we're still so oppressed and it's because of people like you. I mean, they don't say it that way, but, you know, that's that's essentially the message, right? Even when you're, they're, they're dealing with people who are trying to be as positive and, and affirming and, and accepting as they possibly can. And you still got these people. No, no, we're still, still so oppressed. It's just like, no, no, we're not, but we're going to be, if we keep this up, at what point do people eventually give up when they're constantly being told that they're not being tolerant enough? Most of them aren't really even actually anti-gay. They're, they're not even anti-trans. They're just tired of it being smeared in everyone's faces. Especially the social pressure to celebrate LGBT for the entire month of June. I mean, the only way to get away from the celebration of Pride during June is to pretty much lock yourself away without any internet or uh, television or anything. You know, make sure you got your food. Like, you know, maybe maybe go to a cabin, you know, go... Go, go rent a cabin or some shit, right? And make sure you have all your necessities, right? For a month. But, but seriously, people don't want these subjects to be taught in public schools, regardless of how innocent the lessons may actually be. Why is it such a difficult ask 
to request that schools stop teaching something that they've only been formally teaching for less than a decade. Are you really going to make the claim that unless teachers are able to teach about this stuff, that LGBT people will die? And so, yes, people's tolerance is wearing out. Again, it's not the tolerance of LGBT people as individuals. You know, that's been generally okay, although, I mean, I mean, it's not exactly fine, but uh, it's actually in danger if we don't start addressing this more. But people are losing tolerance of the movement, the activism, the propaganda, the school lessons, the in-your-face celebration by so much of corporate America, you know, including, oh, Lockheed Martin, oh, great, yeah, we're, we're so happy to, to build weapons of destruction, that's just so great, let's, let's put rainbows on, on our bombs, right? Let me point out some hypocrisy, and this one's going to sting a little bit, but it still needs to be said. Many of the same people who will say to right-wingers, Ha ha, you're getting all upset over rainbow fabric and feminine colors, will scream in anguish and call it a hate crime if someone burns a pride flag. I thought it was just rainbow fabric and, and feminine colors. You can't have it both ways. And believe it or not, even people who would burn a pride flag are not necessarily anti-LGBT, you know, towards individuals. They might be just tired of the movement. I know that might be a little hard to process for some people, but it really is possible to separate people from the movements they might be a part of. You can support a person as an individual without supporting the uh, whatever movement they are a part of. Also, my being gay shouldn't automatically mean that I'm part of a movement. Just my being out of the closet shouldn't mean that I'm part of a particular movement. And I think most intelligent people understand that. I don't know, but th those were just my thoughts. Thanks for watching.